warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to e-lecture series of basic point of care ultrasound in emergency. Nur Fatimah Tun Zahra binti Ayub, a medical officer from emergency and trauma department hospital Kuala Lumpur. Today I'll be presenting on topic of IFAS. At the end of the lectures, I hope all of us are able to describe the anatomy and the anatomy of EFAS, to perform EFAS with correct technique, and to understand the minimum criteria and limitation of EFAS. This is the outline of my presentation. I'll start first with introduction. Then I'll talk about the image acquisition, image interpretation, and clinical integration. Okay, for introduction, Trauma ultrasound was utilized in trauma setting since 1970. For the past three decades, a lot of studies were done on FAST and it has evolved with EFAST protocol in 2004 with addition of a detection of pneumothorax. And now, FAST has become an HR in primary survey as recommended by ATLS 2012. So what does it mean by EFAST? EFAS are stand for Extended Focus Assessment Sonography in Trauma. EFAS is performed in blood or penetrating abdominal or thoracic trauma and it is also performed in undifferentiated shock as a part of RASH protocol. There are no absolute contraindications for EFAS. So basically, IFAS answers very simple clinical questions, either yes or no. When we perform IFAS, what we are looking for actually are, is there a significant free fit in pericardial cavity? Is there any free fit in the peritoneal cavity? Is there any free fit in the chest cavity? Or is there a pneumothorax? What constitutes a positive IFAS? Any fit visible in any of the potential space is abnormal. In ultrasound, fit will appear an echoic or hypoechoic. Several studies were done on reliability of FAST in detecting hemoperitoneum. This table shows the diagnostic performance of FAST in the ED. As what you can see here, the sensitivity for FAST are widely ranged between the 62 to 96%. This is can be due to several factors including the clinical setting, the experience of the performers, body habits of the patients, and also the equipment. Despite a number of limitations, FAST still has a good sensitivity for identification of free For specificity, most of the studies shows that the specificity for FAST are more than 95%. For pneumothorax, the sensitivity for EFAS are in between 77 to 95 percent and specificity for almost 100 percent. However, in pediatric population, the sensitivity for hemiporitinium is much lower in compared to adult, which were about 52 percent. Positive FAS suggests hemiporitinium, but negative FAS doesn't exclude intraabdominal injury. Now we move to the technique how to perform EFAS. We know the ultrasound is operator dependent. In order to get a good image, we must have a correct technique. The ultrasound we have will produce a 2D image, but what we expect to see is actually a 3D image. By tilting the probe, we can change the 2D image to 3D image. That's why tilting is very important. This is the example how to tilt the probe. There are six places for probe placement, which are the subsiphoid, the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, supra TV, the extended thoracic, and also thoracic view. For right upper quadrant view, we use liver as the sonographic window. The probe should be placed at the mid axillary line in between the 8 to 11 strip. With the probe marker towards the patient's head, we are looking for free fit at the Morrison posh, the caudal tip of the liver, 
the inferior pole of the kidney and the subdiaphragmatic space. This is the still image of right upper quadrant view. This is the kidney and this is the liver. And the more recent part is the space in between the liver and the kidney. The inferior pole of the kidney, the diaphragm and also the frontal tip of the liver. This is what we expect to see at the normal right upper quadrant view. This is the kidney, this is the liver, the more recent part, the caudal tip of the liver and also the subdiaphragmatic space. For right upper quadrant view, fluid tend to accumulate at the more recent part and thus should be the first view obtained in trauma patient. As what you can see here, there is a free fluid at the more recent part. This is the kidney and this is a liver. As what you can see here, there is a free fluid at the caudal tip of the liver. The small amount of free fluid will first accumulate at the caudal tip of the liver, thus it should not be missed. For the left upper quadrant view, we use plane as the sonographic window. The probe should be placed at the posterior axillary line in between the 6 to 9 strip with the probe marker towards the patient's head. We are looking for free fluid at the splenorenal recess, the subdiaphragmatic space, the left pleural space, and also at the free, uh, and also at the inferior pole of the left kidney. This is a still image of the left upper quadrant view. This is the kidney and this is the liver. The recess in between the kidney and liver we call that as splenorenal recess, the inferior pole of the kidney, and this is the subdiaphragmatic space. Because of the presence of ferrinical ligament. The fluid tend to accumulate at the subdiaphragmatic space. This is what we expect to see at the normal left upper quadrant. You can see this is the kidney and this is the spleen. You can see the inferior pole of the kidney, the diaphragm, the subdiaphragmatic space, and also the spleen on the recess. As what you can see here, there is a free fluid at the subdiaphragmatic space and also at the splenorenal recess. Now we move to pelvic view. For pelvic view in a female, fluid tend to accumulate at the push of Douglas, which is behind the uterus before it accumulates entry to the uterus. In male, the fluid tend to accumulate at the rectal vesicle recess. For pelvic view, we use bladder as the sonographic window, so it will be best visualized if the bladder is full. We place the probe just above the symphysis pubis in surgical plane and then we rotate it transversely. Next, we move to the subsifat view. For this view, we use liver as the sonographic window. The probe should be placed just below the zifat process. Flatten the probe and the marker towards the patient's left and angle towards the left shoulder. This is what we expect to see in the subsifat view. We are looking for a free fluid at the pericardial space. This is the liver and this is the heart. This is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. The left video shows pericardial effusion. As what you can see here, there is a free fluid in the pericardial space. And compared to the right side of the video, there is a free fluid in the pericardial, sp in pericardial space. And at the same time, the right side of the heart is collapsed during diastole. 
this is what we call as cardiac tamponade. Cardiac tamponade is caused by the rapid accumulation of fluid in the pericardial space, which in turn will increase in intrapericardial pressure. As the increase in intrapericardial pressure, it will compress the right side of the heart because we know that pressure in the right side of the heart is lower in compared to the left side. As the right side of the heart is being compressed, it will decrease the diastolic feeling and in turn, it will decrease the cardiac output. This is what we call as cardiac tamponade. Now we move to extended thoracic view. Extended thoracic view actually is the extended view of the right upper quadrant and left upper quadrant. We have to select the probe cranially above the diaphragm to look at hematorrhoids. This is the image that we should obtain in extended thoracic view. There is a liver, diaphragm, spine, and in normal lung, we expect to see a curtain sign. Curtain sign is a sonographic artifact found in lung ultrasound. It is used to describe the appearance of an expanded lung. This is a curtain sign. In hemothorax, you can no longer see the curtain sign because the presence of the free fluid. The free fluid will appear as an accurate way superior to the liver or spleen. And the other sign is the extension of the thoracic line or we call that as spine sign. Studies shows that um, ultrasound has a higher sensitivity in detecting hemothorax in compared to chest x-ray because ultrasound can pick up as minimum as 20 mL of free fluid. For chest x-ray, we need at least about 200 ml before it can be shown in chest x-ray. Next, we move to the next view which is thoracic view. For thoracic view, we place the probe on the anterior chest wall at the second intercostal space in mid-clavicular line in sagittal orientation. We have to select the probe caudally and don't forget to compare it with the opposite side. This is a still image of the lung. The ecogenic line here is a plural line and this is the rib and this is the lung. This is what we expect to see in a normal lung. In normal lung, we can see a sliding sign. Take a look at this plural line. You can see it's moving, right? This is what we call it as sliding sign. We know that our pleura is made up of two layers, which are the parietal pleura and visceral pleura. When these layers are sliding each other, it will produce a sliding sign, as what we can see here. When we put in M mode, in normal lung, we can see a seashore sign. This is the sea and this is the shore. The sea is formed by the subcutaneous tissue and the shore is a wavy pattern generated by lung sliding motion. This is for a normal lung. How about pneumothorax? In pneumothorax, we can no longer see the sliding sign. Because there is a presence of air in between the two plural layer. Presence of sliding sign can rule out pneumothorax, but absent in sliding sign cannot rule in pneumothorax because there is also other condition that can cause absent in sliding sign. For example, like lung pathology, like um, pneumonia, bullus, lung, lung atelectasis, or it can be due to one lung intubation. So what is the things that more specific for pneumothorax? It is lung point. For this lung point, I'll explain it later. In pneumothorax, if we put in M mode, it will produce barcode sign or we call that as stratosphere sign. The live video shows normal sliding sign. You can see it's moving, right? And 
the right video shows absent sliding sign. Can you appreciate them? Okay, one more time. Normal sliding sign. And absent sliding sign. Alright. In Emotorex, if we put in M mode, it will produce a barcode sign, or we call that a stratosphere sign. You only can see the sea without the shore. This is a lung point, which is more specific for Pneumothorax. Lung point is a point where the visceral pleura begin to separate from the parietal pleura. As what you can see here, this is the normal sliding sign and this is absent sliding sign. The transition between the normal and abnormal referred as lung point. This view is much more clearer. Take a look at this. Okay, one more time. Can you appreciate the lung point now? Okay, one more time. Alright. And for lung point, if we put in M mode, we can see the transition between the barcode sign and also the seashore sign and between we call it as lung point. Now we move to the next chapter which is clinical application. In clinical setting, first is very useful in unstable hypothesis trauma patient. In the so-called golden hours, Patient with intra-abdominal bleeding, the probability of death will increase by 1% in every 3 minutes. So, in unstable patient, when we perform fast and it turns out to be positive, we can straight away send patient for surgical intervention. If patient is unstable and the fast is negative, we have to look for another cause of hypertension. Is there any extra abdominal injury? Is there any retroperitoneal injury? But if the patient is stable, we still can buy time and send patient for CT scan for further investigation. For a patient who comes to ED with blunt or penetrating chest injury, we have to determine either this patient is stable or unstable. If the patient is unstable and when we perform EFAS, there is a pericardial effusion, we have to determine either this patient is in tamponade or not. If this patient is in tamponade, we have to do a pericardial synthesis to release the pressure or we can exit pictal catheter or do a pericardial window. If the patient is unstable but if it shows negative, we have to do a further investigation the ECG, the TROP D, the serial EFAS, chest x ray and as well as CT thorax. A lot of studies were done on FAS and as FAS can be performed at a bedside, it decreased the CT utilization, it reduced time to operative intervention, it reduced the complication and at the end it shortened the hospital stay and as overall, it lowered the cost. Samples for EFAS, serial EFAS examination decreased false negative rate by 50% and increased the sensitivity. The minimal amount of free fluid that can be detected by the ultrasound is about 200 ml of fluid. Initially, it can be false negative due to the slow beat because there was not enough free fluid. Trendy Lumberg position can make the upper quadrant views more sensitive, whereas the reverse Trendy Lumberg can make the pelvic view more sensitive. We also must know the limitation for EFAS. 
it is difficult to distinguish the type of heat is it infusion or blood we also cannot determine the source of bleeding in obese patient or patient with subcutaneous emphysema it's quite difficult to get a good visualization because of this in ascites it can be false positive and beware of petrol peritoneal and hollow viscous injury because it can cause false negative. For take home message, now we know that IFAS has high sensitivity and specificity. We have to integrate IFAS in trauma examination and we must know the pitfall and limitation for IFAS. And last but not least, Practice next. Perfect. Thank you.